There we go. Hi, my name is Allie Lincoln, and I'm here to talk to you tonight about adoption. I'd like to first introduce you to a few people that are very, very important in my life. This is Chrissy. This is John John. This is Joseph. This is Kaylee. There is one more child, but the child is brand new and unfortunately wasn't involved in this picture, so I wasn't able to get a picture of the five children. I wanted to introduce these children to you because not only are they special to me because they are my grandchildren, but they're all adopted. In the United States in 2002, 129 children were in foster care system nationwide waiting to be adopted as presented in, article, in an article on foster parents considering adoption written in 2005. Another fact that I want to tell you th is that the inability to conceive and have children is a devastating reality for one out of six couples. One out of six. That information came from a DVD by Dr. William Cutter in, in his, his DVD on infertility called When the Nest is Empty. There are thousands and thousands of children out there that need to be adopted. Unfortunately, most people don't realize that many of them are here in the United States. I find that people feel that they can't get babies or little children here, so they go to other countries to adopt their children. I have a sister-in-law who adopted a Chinese, a, a child from China. She's little Alexa, and she's a wonderful, wonderful child. The problem is that she had to come up with $20,000 just to go to the country and for the fees to adopt her. There are children, thousands and thousands of children in the foster care system right now that need a home. They need a home where they have two parents that can love them and where they can be part of a family. In the foster care system, unfortunately, if you don't have a family that adopts you, by the time you're at the age of 18, you're what they call aging out. An aging out child is given $200 and dropped off on the street, basically at the age of 18. If they go to college, then their college is paid for. But if they choose not to go to college, then they, they have very little to no choice if nobody adopts them. My grandchildren, the ones that you just met, came to us through foster care. My oldest granddaughter, Chrissy, we got when she was two years old along with her brother John John when he was six months old. Chrissy was badly abused. Her mother was a drug addict, her father was a, was a child molester, and Chrissy was beaten and starved and molested, and they tried to drown her in a bathtub. Little John was just starved. Now Joseph, on the other hand, was taken right out of, out of the hospital and put into foster care. We got him when he was seven months old, and Kaylee was, was taken right out of the hospital and she was put in foster care for a month and we got her when she was a month old and then we have a little guy named Caleb he's we got him when he was a day old he um, is our youngest one I'd like to tell you why I believe that adoption in the United States is so much better for especially for the people of the United States than going to another country when you adopt in the United States, there are a few things that you, that you will have available to you that you won't have if you adopt in another country. The first thing being that you have open records of the children. That means that you know what parents they came from. That means that you know what their de defects are. That means that you know what sicknesses and de diseases are in the family. Basically, you get a background on these children, so you know what you're, you're coming up against before you adopt them. The second reason is, is because they have medical insurance till the age of 18 when you adopt them out of foster care. They also are given college, a college education if they choose to go in the state that they, that they were adopted out of. Last but not least, if you adopt a sibling group, then you receive money just like you would if they were a foster care child each and every month for each child. My daughter receives $400 a month per child so she can stay home and raise them. In, if you adopt in another country, you don't have any of those, those rights. You, you're not covered by medical insurance. They're not, there is no money that comes to you for adopting them. Matter of fact, you end up paying close to $20,000 or more to adopt children. Whereas if you adopt foster children in the United States, the adoption is free. The, probably the worst problem that you have when you adopt outside of the United States is you have no idea where the children came from, what their background is, and most often you never even know who their families are. Again, back to my sister-in-law who adopted a little girl from China. 
little Alexa was just thrown by, by a dumpster and left there when they found her. They have no idea where she came from, who she was, what kind of diseases, what the family background is, nothing. And fortunately for them, Alexa turned out to be a really super kid. But, they, but my sister-in-law has a very close friend who adopted a child from China, and that child has many, many problems. She's having trouble bonding, she's very violent, she's very angry, and they don't seem to be able to get through to her. Again, there is no record of what, what happened to the child or what the child went through. I wanted to give you my version and my opinion about adoption because adoption is very dear to my heart. I have five beautiful grandbabies because my daughter chose to adopt. I'm hoping that after you see this, not only will you, one, choose to adopt children, but two, that you'll adopt them here in the United States and bring some of these children a happy and loving home. Thank you for listening.